All right, so hello and welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, my name is Ariana and I'll be the moderator for the session. I do have a few quick reminders before we get started. First, know that this session is being recorded. Um, we also have closed captioning available and it doesn't show up automatically. So to access the captioning, click the CC Live Transcript button at the lower right side of your Zoom screen. Um, I also want to remind everyone about our conference code of conduct, and I'm putting that link in the chat right now. And all participants will receive a survey at the close of the conference on Friday afternoon, so we do encourage you to please fill out that survey. And now I'm excited to introduce the speakers for this session, ins and outs of publicly available resources traversing the OER landscape. We have Eve Zahavi, Assistant Professor of Literacy Education at the University of Houston downtown. And we have Kayla Logan, who teaches English composition at San Jacinto College South Campus in Houston, Texas. So Eve and Kayla, I'm gonna go ahead and pass it over to you. Go ahead. Great, thank you guys for being here. It is wonderful to see so many people and uh, to be at a, at a conference is wonderful. I'm going to share my screen with you guys um, for the presentation. And I'm also um, going to put a, a document in the chat. Now there is a PDF also available um, in the, um, I'm not real sure where it is, within the platform that you can find that. And so, but I noticed that the links were not hot. And so I just made a, a little document so you guys um, can feel free to actually click some of these links um, if you'd like to um, explore those as we move forward. So um, I thought it was really refreshing to hear our keynote speaker, Dr. Pollard, and to hear her um, perception from um, also a uh, humanities or a liberal arts view. And I have to let you guys know that we too um, are coming at OER um, from a similar perspective. Um, and the image that I chose to put here and the title with the use of the word traversing goes back to this, I, I think, um, enthusiasm, but also frustration, um, very much uh, wanting to do OER. As, as was mentioned, we want social justice. We want things to be there for our students. But um, we also encountered some struggle, and it was a little bit of an uphill battle um, sometimes doing that. So in this presentation, um, we're going to begin by talking about our research, which was in, in a quest to find the right OER um, and to decide whether to go OER or to stick with the textbook um, and all of the, the ways that that took us in terms of really defining and understanding what is OER and what isn't, um, learning about these Creative Commons codes, which seem a little confusing. And then we're gonna give you guys some recommendations and give you some uh, things to think about as we move forward. So I'm gonna move, uh, turn it over to Eve to talk a little bit about our research. Okay, so um, as Kayla mentioned, um, we did not come at this from an OER perspective. We came as, uh, teachers of English and wanting to compare what we thought was, uh, uh, what Kayla thought was a really good textbook for her class at San Jack. Um, and, you know, they're encouraging us to use OER. So we wanted to compare it to the OER course and that those OER courses are, have prescribed texts. That's correct, right? The OER is prescribed. So, um, I have a background in um, corpus linguistics, so we used that as a starting point to measure content. And what this slide shows is basically where, um, where the words argument and argumentation occurred in both texts, the OER and in the um, traditional text. And then um, we can find those words argumentation and persuasion in context in each of those places. And that was our way of making sure that uh, both texts were using 
those term that terminology in the same way. These are argument and argumentation are important in um, composition, so uh, important concepts. So we wanted to make sure that we were comparing the same thing. So that's what that's where we started our journey. Mm. So um, we started, that was the that was the content, right? But there's more to evaluating OER than the content. So we saw that there were things missing for us uh, that we really wanted addressed. And I'm gonna let uh, Kayla talk a little bit about what she saw or didn't see. Now, this is specifically for literature. Um, it's a little different in other disciplines. Um, but for us, this was really important. So, yeah, thank you, Eve. So um, I was a little bit skeptical of some of the OER options, although, um, like you could see from the computational linguistics, which was like a, like a really quick way to, to kind of skim those OER selections to see what content was there. And what we found essentially was that a lot of the content is similar. Um, but the reading levels or just the ease of reading were maybe not there. And I think that, um, you know, we're, we're reading teachers and reading educators. So wanting students to be enthusiastic about the text that they were looking at was really important. And to be frank, um, several of the OER textbooks were missing that, uh, that visual, you know, beautifulness that kind of made students want to read. Um, and they were also commonly missing um, student exemplars. Uh, so there, there would be a lot of writing about writing, but maybe not a lot of examples of what a student or a professional would actually do. And then many of these were also missing supplements. But I think that what really made us um, want to delve into this were the, the lack of those visual attributes, the images and the navigation. Now, this isn't always true for all OER, but I found it to be true for the books that we were looking at. And so we were exhausted. We had been doing a lot of work looking at these things. And what we decided to do was to take a look at some sources for um, analyzing textbooks the old fashioned way, and then to think about how that could be integrated into a, a quick checklist that really busy professors um, could use to just kind of give an overview of an OER source. And we're going to come back to this checklist a little bit later. Um, what we also wanted to do today was to take you, as I said, through our question of as we're digging into all of these options, what exactly is OER and what is it not? Um, and so, Eve, I'm going to turn it over to you to talk about this slide and then also um, the institutional differences. Okay, so um, as we know, House Bill uh, 810, this is talking about um, encouraging universities or requiring universities to offer this. Um, and uh, this, this is their language. So to them, OER is a teaching, learning, or research resource that is in the public domain or has been released under an intellectual property license that permits free use, adaptation, redistribution of the resource by any person. The term may include full, whoops. Sorry. <laughs> the term may include full course curricula, course materials, modules, textbooks, media assessments, software, and any other tools, materials, or techniques, whether digital or otherwise used to support access to knowledge. So that's what the bill says. But each institution has its own definition. This has been, um, I've been on the um, OER task force at our university and uh, part of our mission is just to give definitions, what we are going to call our OER. So at um, University of Houston downtown, we have no cost resources. This is labels courses that use only free educational resources. They're provided to students free of charge by the library or developed someplace else and vetted by or otherwise vetted by faculty. The low cost resources and many institutions have this as a, as a designation um, is to label courses whose required course materials total no more than $50. But I know that 
at Sam Jack, they have a very different uh, structure. Um, they have actually three, three um, levels of definition. They have open books, which is, uh, and we'll, I think we'll talk about this a little bit later, but open books, there's no cost to students, but it's not no cost. There is a cost to the university to provide those resources. So open books is no cost to students. Open books low, which is a course requiring $50 or less to invest in materials. And then a third designation, which is called open books plus, which actually adds a fee onto the course that the student is responsible for. So that gets us into our next, our next slide. Um, so these things are, again, we, we just broke it down into all the different domains. They are in the public domain. They have an open license. They have no cost access and can be used. This is probably the most important, can be used, adapted and redistributed with no or limited restrictions. That sounds really great. And so, oh, Kayla and I just dived into uh, finding all these um, wonderful OER uh, exemplars. And we discovered that they are not always free and they are not always free use. So these are some of the more common. Um, do you wanna talk a little bit about this one? Yeah, sure. So we realized uh, from doing our research that other people were having the same frustration that we were. And I've given you the link directly to this Inside Higher Ed article, the truth is out there like the X-Files or the aliens, right? Um, to be able to understand OER, you have to kind of understand all of those different levels and then you just have to do a lot of clicking and searching to find what's going to work in, in your course if you are not going for the option um, that might be like a Lumen Learning or a Soft Chalk or Cengage. So if, 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 like, if you're an English teacher and you don't want to adopt a full text, but you kind of want to put this together on your own for that interest and for um, a variety of pieces, maybe you're going to add student exemplars. Um, what we realized is that we were really, um, we were really searching for things and then we'd get to these dead ends. Um, so here are two examples of some dead end moments that you might have as you're searching for OER. And what you get to is you start into in a free area and then as you continue to click, you begin to get some of these um, some of these things that say, well, this isn't really an open textbook, or um, this access might be included and it might not. And so this uphill climb became even more of a challenge. Um, you have these links. These are some of the the best and coolest of the areas where we went to look for these things. And I would encourage you right now just to feel free to click into those and see what's available um, for your discipline. OpenStax is really wonderful and peer reviewed. And I know that a lot of in professors on Sam Jack opt for that, but there are not composition or literature pieces. Um, also, some of the issues regarding copyright um, is where some of the literature professors run into problems if they want to teach a book or an article that is within copyright. So these were really great and gave us a lot of ideas, but as we would click further in, yet again, we would um, find that once you got into the materials that were required for the course, um, then it would say buy at Amazon, and some of these were actually quite expensive. Um, so, although many of the, them were free, not all of them were. And then we wanted to also think about how to add media selection. So this next little group, um, I bet many of you are familiar with these, uh, some of these already, but when we were wanting to create presentations as part of maybe our online OER course, we were constantly looking for images and music and videos that could be used um, you know, legally, um, meaning that we weren't going to interfere with copyright, we, we weren't going to have problems, uh, and we wanted to be ethical with what we really were presenting, because we know that just because it can be found online does not mean that it's right to use it or to guide your students to use it. 
Um, and so one of the best things um, is the Google Images where you can actually use their tool to find um, images um, and then the Wikimedia Commons. You can also find um, music and videos that have been created and are within Creative Commons licensing. Now, if anybody has ever, you know, been doing that search, that Google search, and, and you can be very overwhelmed by Creative Commons codes. There are a lot of pictures and sometimes it's very confusing what you can do with those. Um, and so, Eve, we have only about five minutes. Would you talk just a little bit about these differences that people yes. uh, sometimes don't understand? Okay, so the little symbols is usually what you'll see. You won't see the BY, SA, ND, and NC, but BY is maximum dissemination. You can alter it. You just have to credit the original. So that gives you, you can even use it for commercial purposes. You just have to give credit. Um, share alike is for creators who want to um, adopt this, but um, they want to, uh, they're required to adopt an open license, but they have to use with attribution. Um, ND is no derivatives, which means you cannot alter it in any way. And of course, NC is no commercial use. So um, they're, uh, for the most part, as educators, we, I, we don't consider our use commercial, but um, it is important to know that. So the best thing is CC0. CC0 is no right, no rights reserved, and no attribution. You can use it without giving anyone credit, um, which makes it very simple. And um, Kayla, if you'll just quickly go back to that slide a couple mm -hmm. of minutes back. No, back, back. Mm, one more. Okay, so all of these sites are CC0 for the most part. Um, there are lots of places you can get images that you don't have to credit um, at all. Okay, you, I'm sorry, go forward. That's fine. Yeah. And so, yes, I just, I'm, I'm trying to watch the chat a little bit um, and thank you guys so much for charm, uh, chiming in on those. And yeah, I'm glad that you mentioned the librarians and I know that there's gonna be a presentation about really talking to librarians. Eve is also, has been a librarian, has a degree in library science. Um, and that was one of the biggest tips that, that we found. So if you want to link these things into your Blackboard shell or if you want to use them, um, talking to the librarian is definitely important. Also, just to go up to the top of that, um, uh, things like Merlot and some of the uh, SUNY ones, um, they offer peer review sites. And so if you get an opportunity to click peer reviewed only, um, you, you don't waste a lot of time, right? You can kind of get to some higher quality things. Also, just as a reminder, um, you know, when you get into OER, not all of it is American and not all of it is in um, English as first language, which sometimes is important, sometimes isn't. Maybe in a composition or a literature class, you're, you know, concerned about the quality of the writing. So you got to watch out for that a little bit. Um, Eve, do you want to add anything about the yes. library? Yeah, so I just, a couple of things about the peer reviewed sites. So peer reviewed um, may, they may be reviewed by as few as two people. Um, and the, like, for example, the criteria for Merlot is the quality of the content, the effectiveness of the teaching tool and the ease of use. But nowhere in there is there a place for, oh, homework assignments or end of uh, chapter questions or, or test, or quizzes or or even as uh, Kayla said exemplars so um, you really have to be careful even though they're pre-reviewed there they still may be some things that you want to look for also when you talk to a librarian most library holdings you can use you can embed in blackboard and probably in canvas without breaking copyright so if you're a student in the university and you um, have access to blackboard the you as a professor can embed whatever article in Blackboard for your students for that class. Um, the other thing is I know in our library, um, our philosophy has been, we ha they have lots of OER available, but none of it is vetted. So you have to sort of do it on your own. Now it has a link to Merlot, but it also has links to other things that may not have the same quality. 
Um, and one other point I wanted to make is that uh, it is very true when you are in the humanities, those those pieces are harder, to, more difficult to find. The uh, OpenStax is fabulous, but it is m heavy on math and science. Yeah, and I'd like to just, I had a chance to look in the chat and I wanted to say thank you to Deanne for giving us that resource. Um, and also thanks to Natalie for um, uh, clarifying share alike. Um, and yes, that is something also Alan posted in biology. We found that a lot. So the material is free, but if they want to print it out or if that, you know, depending on the age or the preferences of your learners, you know, there might be some hidden fees there that you just want to be, I think you want to be upfront with them, right? You don't want to get them into an OER class and then them, the students realize, oh, but if I want it this way, you know, I'm, I am going to have to pay. Um, again, this is a little bit from the literature more and, and a composition perspective, but just speaking to that idea, and I know you guys do this uh, if you're faculty members and we're all always thinking about the learners, um, but that goes back to, is this the way that they're going to want to use that material? Um, also, if you're, not many of us are face-to-face, -face, a few at San Jack still are, um, hybrid or online, is that going to make a difference in the choices that you make in the actual text that you choose? Um, and then using um, our, our tool that we're in the process still of developing to really think about the pedagogical resources um, or the pedagogical approach um, that you want to take for your course. Um, and then, of course, the institutional expectations for downloading or copying um, and to, uh, to what extent you can ask students to buy um, certain resources. So we just want to wrap up the, this part of the presentation. Hopefully we'll have a little time, but I would like to encourage you guys to also put um, your questions in the chat. Um, this is our quick we're trying to make it as quick as possible um, evaluation for content analysis of OER. Um, and we have, again, taken this from several sources for more traditional textbooks, but we've tried to streamline it into just some very quick questions that you would ask yourself as you're looking through those texts. Um, and the, the last one here is uh, just a quick, it's, it's a little dated, 2017, um, for OER myth busting. If any of you are kind of still, I think if you're here, you're wanting to move forward. Um, but if you're still a little skeptical, um, OER myth busting is, is a nice source. And I provided that link also in the, in the two pager that I gave you. Um, this is a challenge. It is, it is a, an uphill battle for those of us who would like to create our own, but also want to, um, you know, find the best things that are out there legally and present those in, in ways that our students react well to them. Um, so we have about a minute or two left. Um, Jennifer, you are certainly welcome. And I really appreciate those of you um, dropping other things into the chat. Um, you are welcome to unmute yourself and, and ask questions if you have any um, in the last minute or two of the presentation. There is a question about where to find the evaluation checklist for OER. Do you have a link for that? No, I do not have a link for that, but you should be. Well, it should be in the PDF. Um, Ariana, did you put the PDF in the chat? So what I, um, I'm not sure if this is the PDF that you're referring to, but the PDF of your slides is available on the yes. um, session yes. info page. So that's what I just put in the chat. So you can find the slides there that should have the links on them. Yes, we, we have not published this yet. We, we, this, is, um, this is a work in progress. Um, and so what you have there on the PDF and, and on, the, on the slide is basically the, the breakdown of that. Great. Well, we have a, about a minute left. So if anyone has um, one question you want to ask, feel free to put it out there. I 
it seems like we're good. I don't see any other questions coming in. Thank you so much, Eve and Kayla. That was a really fantastic presentation. I can see a lot of people in the chat saying that they appreciated it and thank you. So thank you so much. Um, it thank was so fast. Us. Thank you guys for being here. Yes, thank you good everyone luck. for coming. <laughs> good luck on your journey. I'm never sure how to end these things. I think I'm just going to go ahead and close out the room. <laughs> yeah, <can laughs> and then I think the recording will stop there. All right, thank you so Thanks, much. Thanks, guys. Great um, job. Ariana, can I get a copy of the recording? And um, do, when you get a when you get the recording, do I have access to closed captioning? To captioning? That is a good question that I don't know. I don't know how soon the recordings will become available. Let me write down that you asked that question so I can look into it and get back okay. to you. Thank you when it will be available, how you can access it, and if there will be captions. Okay, thank okay. you. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and close the room. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank you.